bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other way Welcome to the Wife Savers Podcast where multi-award-winning author and global marriage educator Ramona Zabriskie provides answers to your real wife questions. Our goal is to help you appreciate your womanhood, prioritize your personal development, and craft a powerful partnership with the man in your life. Hi, I'm Hannah Allen, and I'm proud to introduce my parents, Ramona and Dale Zabriskie. And yes, this is how they talk all the time. Let's listen. Hi, this is Dale Zabriskie, sitting across the table from the person who's been literally the wind beneath my wings for 41 years. Oh my goodness. That's Ramona Zabriskie. That sounds like a song. Yeah, time to cue the music. <laughs> she believes in me, wind beneath my wings. Wait a minute, there, is a, there are a lot of songs on that very theme. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, you know, music is created because of emotion. And mm. emotion is often created because of relationships. That's so true. And the relationships, this is interesting. And the relationships that we treasure the most are the people who believe in us. That, that have a huge impact in our lives. Yeah. Because they we, believe in us. Because they believe in us. We've gone through difficult things together, mm. groups or individuals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when we met, I was just uh, a rudderless mass of... <laughs> Just all sorts of problems and shit. Where's the tiller? Where's the captain? Yeah, no, no. Just, you know, and what I look, and I look back and I realize that um, when I met you and then early on in our relationship, uh -huh. you know, I was trying to do things, but it was a hit and miss. It was just a BB gun type of, <laughs> try that. That didn't work. Let's try that. And there wasn't any Do you remember working on the dairy? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember working on the dairy. I had to bring that up. Do you remember throwing newspapers? Yeah, we threw newspapers. Do you remember time. trying to be sell real estate? <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? No, it was trying to learn how to sell real estate. <laughs> I never sold real estate. Oh, that's right. We I never really did it. No, that's right. <laughs> couldn't get to that point. Yeah, insurance, uh, radio advertising. I mean, it's just this selling long, Xerox long list. copiers. <laughs> copiers, yeah. But those were all. We we always felt those were justified that they were leading to the bigger picture, the glorious ending. But we just didn't know what the glorious yeah. ending was, right? No, and it it really took for me. I think I was like pushing forty before I really said this is what I want to do. I remember that remember conversation. That? We were at a Wendy's. It's a Wendy's. <laughs> having hamburgers at Wendy's. That's right. It's so true. We were. I was having a salad. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> I remember it well. Yes. And, and a large frosty she had. <laughs> That's right. Which totally negates the salad. Exactly. They cancel each other out. But we, we, we said, okay, this is it. I mean, the company you were working for just shut down or something. Yeah. And it would be how much, you know, we'd been unemployed so many times. And we said, okay, no more. What do we really want to do? Yep. And we had to piece it together. Remember that conversation? We said, Very well, you so. really, really, what makes you really excited? And we worked our way through it until we realized what it was. And we, lo and behold, that's what happened. We, You went out and got that kind of job. and Yeah, that was uh, 20, 20 years ago, basically. Yeah. And that was the beginning of what has been a phenomenal ride for a lot of reasons. I have a question for you. Um, so we've just been relating to this idea of believing in... A woman believing in her man, for instance, uh, to a career, which is important <laughs> to the extreme. But I, uh, what I want to know is, do you, do you feel like your fathering uh, matured, moved along, mm. got better because I believed in you that way as well? I mean, there got to be other aspects of personality development mm -hmm. and you know, growing into yeah. the kind of man you want to be besides Sure. Career? I think maturation, mm -hmm. you know, manifests itself in lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we used to used to joke about 
uh, uh, you know, athletes who uh, were were professional athletes and amateur human beings. You know, they, they, they're in the news all the time. <laughs> so you can right? be really, really good in your career. Yeah, and, yeah. not so good. But I, but have I, some character. Yeah, I found uh, development. Once I got on a path that had it wasn't just a job. It wasn't just uh -huh. a, I'm going to do this because I need money. Uh -huh. It was starting to lead me somewhere that yeah, it had an impact. I think in everything. But. I, I, you know, looking back, I really think that I believed that you would become a great husband eventually. Well, this was after we went through near divorce. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the week after that. Yeah, no, it's really true. <laughs> no, that you would. I, I really believed you would become the man, the partner, and I really believed that that you would be the kind of grandpa you are today, for instance, because you were becoming a father and you were learning through the process. Well, the grandpa and... thing is pretty darn easy, <laughs> I got to say. And if I knew it was so much fun, I would have had grandkids first, <laughs> bypassed all that other stuff. But so no, true. it's true. It is true. And, and it's more it's more not being grandparent. I think the key in the grandparent thing is that you learn uh, and you're, you mature in your relationship with your own kids yeah. so that you don't become a liability to them yeah. as, a grand, <laughs> as a grandparent, right? <laughs> uh, but you know what? So the whole thing is a maturation process that is only really made whole or by a partner. Is this yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And I, okay. I think the one thing I wanted to add that you have and always, and one thing I saw in you initially that attracted mm. me to you was your ability to see people for what they can become. Aww. You've always been really just good. I think it's been a natural thing for you that you've developed and, and made better oh. in your life and w certainly had an impact for me, the mm. the guy in the ditch, mm. you know, the long-haired hippie <laughs> uh, drug addict that you've met. Um, that, and that's really the key, I think, for the uh -huh. relationship. And yes, and, and it goes both ways. You see the potential and you stay fo you're focused on that potential uh -huh. and that impacts the decisions that you make and how you interact and and what it inspires yeah others, others yeah, to become other to sure. especially the other you're closest yeah, to right that is beautiful and i i i i feel like i'm gonna <laughs> write that in my journal that you said that about me about myself you know sometimes we don't see ourselves like others see us sure. i never thought of myself in that way but I think you are right. Well, I, like I said, it's natural. Yeah. It, it is natural for you. You've And all the relationships of people that have come mm. in and out of your life as a mm. young person and as an mm. adult. Uh, well, we all remember the teacher that we felt really believed in us, that yeah. made the difference. All right. So I think we've established the fact that how we all crave it, how we all need someone to believe in us. And if it's not the person <laughs> that we've invested our whole life and soul into the person who's supposed to know and love us better than anyone else. Who else yeah, is going to do it? Yeah, yeah. We're really dependent on our spouse for that kind of faith that, that translates into the wind, you know, beneath our wings. Well, the letter that we're, we're going to discuss comes from a, a listener who has been attending what she calls a forgiveness session at a conference that her husband and she are attending together. Mm, Isn't that interesting? A forgiveness session. Yeah, it's Everybody some kind of... sit down, you're going to forget. Well, I guess it's like <laughs> some kind of you know, maybe spiritual aspect and that, mm -hmm. you know, what is it that's keeping us holding... I don't know, yeah. but I've heard of those kind of things. They sound very helpful. And so that's where they're at. And she said, I've discovered today during this conference what my husband resents about me more than anything else. Uh, mm. dun, dun, That's an dun. eye opener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that connotes their other things. Ouch. He allowed me to read his notes, which said, I forgive, and then her name, for not believing in me. Hmm. So, she asks, how do I restore this? There doesn't seem to be obvious disbelief. So, I need to understand better how to show that I believe in him. I think she not... Pause from the letter writer. I think she needs to not only understand how better to show that she believes in him, she probably first needs to understand what she's doing 
that's that sending the mind, opposite yeah. message. Right. right. So let's talk about that. She said, I just told, I just talked to him and I told him that I believed in him before bed two nights ago, but I do not think it sunk in. Now she gets very astute. She says, actions are going to be the best way. Where do I start? Mm. So she's told him, but I do believe in you. She can't really see what she's doing, but, but I do believe in you. It hasn't, he doesn't believe it. He might not believe it because there's years and years and yeah, years. Yeah, this is not a single incident. Behind them that he's taken the things she said to mean the opposite. So her just saying, no, 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 I do believe in you. She's right. Yeah. Actions are going to speak Well, this has been a catalyst for her to be aware of that now. And yeah. Had, and it's a, it was a shock, obviously, and that mm -hmm. she wasn't aware that he felt that way. Yeah. How? That, that, that is a real ah, shaking yeah. kind of eye opener. So let's talk a little bit about what she might be doing that's actually sending that message. In, in my whole philosophy that's in my book and in... And I teach very explicitly through Wife Savers and Wife for Life University is the crazy ladies, right? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone loves the crazy ladies, <laughs> except the men in our lives. Um, yeah, the the crazy. <laughs> Right. But we women just have a good time laughing at the crazy ladies because we're all the crazy ladies. And this is just those personas that will eat a man for lunch, basically. Um, sometimes we know we can feel it when it's coming on and we're in the middle of it. And sometimes it creeps up on us. We don't even realize what we're doing. But you know what I'm talking about. I know. I am intimately familiar with all the crazy ladies. And when you see it coming on That's with right. me, what do you do? You get me a sandwich. Yeah. I feed you. <laughs> you feed me. Feed you. you hug, hug you. You hug me. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you put your fingers up like this. Yeah. I get the wolf bane and the, <laughs> and the garlic out if like it's really bad. Yeah, your fingers right. like, back off, yeah, I, just, I just leave. <laughs> get, out of the, get out of the way. So some of the crazy lady behaviors that she may inadvertently be doing, I'm thinking, are maybe she's showing she's disappointed. In him, and mm. probably lots of different ways, but particularly in his job, or that maybe he doesn't make enough yeah, money, he's not or that she makes enough. more money than he mm. does, or maybe she's crying because she can't afford certain things because of his income, or and this is sending that message. Do you think that men are yeah, really sensitive? To yeah, that? definitely. I mean, it's it's how you define, you know, a big part of your manhood. Mm. You know, when when. As you like to say, when guys meet each other for the first time, the first question they ask each other is, what do you do? What you do know, you what's do? your job? Because it's oh. so much of an identifying factor. Oh. And there's so much pressure mm -hmm. to perform in that way. Mm -hmm. And if depending on the job that you're in, most I think most guys are in an environment where they're working with other people that yeah. are peers. Yeah. You start to compare yourself and say, Oh, you can't you know, help it. Yeah. It's you're like he's so driving a nicer car motivated. or they mm. just went to Hawaii or whatever mm -hmm. to fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And so you feel this urge to provide more to have more and if that's coming from inside the house oh not only at work but yeah, from home that can be sense of yeah super duper uh disappointment and failure uh, -huh. uh for that environment that you're really re primarily responsible for and you, you feel, want to have, you feel that's your primary responsibilities right. to your family yeah. contribute to the family. and if that's not a comfortable Income. place to be you know if it's not a refuge or a sanctuary right. to come it's just home a to reminder because, yeah that you're exactly. failing in some respect right or coming short falling short yeah right. ouch right so you can see in that sense, why he would think she doesn't mm -hmm. really believe in me. She doesn't could be. think I'm could really, be the career I'm not that. doing. Um, maybe she questions his decisions, either at work or his decisions for the family or whatever in front of others, mm -hmm. especially the children. Yeah. Or he's not doing it the way she would do it, whatever it is. Mm. And that's a message of, right. I don't believe in you. I don't trust you to do ah, fill in the blank. And it could ah. be something as easy as cleaning the kitchen or <laughs> washing the it could be something really mundane or it could be oh, something even more it could be an accumulation of all these kind of messages yeah yeah definitely wow 
Okay. I've all, I've also observed women treating their husbands almost like a non-entity. Oh, and talking in, in the third person. Yeah. Or like they're <laughs> yeah. standing there and they just totally monopolize the conversation. Or someone asks the husband a question and the wife interrupts yeah. and steps in and answers for him or just ignores. Have you seen that? Yeah, in social definitely. Settings? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That hurts when I see that. Or when a woman corrects her husband. Publicly. Oh, well, publicly, especially, but even at home, you know, corrects him or makes demands of him or hands him ultimatums. You know, this is all sort of treating him like you don't know exactly what you're talking about. You don't know what you're really doing. So there's skills to communicate those things. The, the needs and the, and, you know, if, if and we have plenty of experiences together that <laughs> where I had to be corrected on doing something wrong. <laughs> oh, I see what you're see what saying. I'm saying. Yeah. It's how you come to. Oh, there's a, there's the language of respect, yeah. which is a wise saver skill set. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause there, that's just a give and take of right. relationship and marriage, especially. Right. So what you're getting at is how it's achieved. Yes. To show respect. Yes. And then yeah. the, the crazy lady approach kind of knocks his legs out from under him, right? And, and if, as you say, in front of others, that's mm. that's incredibly humiliating right. to a guy. And I, we can all understand, none of us like that to happen. We don't like our husbands doing that to no, us. No, no, absolutely. In front of others, no. right. Um, but, you know, another idea I'm thinking of that may be sending the message is she's, in her mind, she's just so busy. She's got her own work. She's got the kids. She's She's got the house. She's whatever, all these other demands and people and responsibilities in her life. And from his point of view, she's just not showing enough interest in him, in mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. things that are important to him, including his work. Maybe she, it comes across as being apathetic. Yeah, I got my work. You got your work, you mm-hmm. know. Or, or he's done something big. He's finally accomplished this thing at work or something. And maybe he comes home and drops something about it. Like, well, I guess I finally finished wrap this up today. And she's like, oh, good, great. Yeah. You know, and he he needs uh, yeah. balloons and streamers right. and, right. Fireworks <laughs> and a or crowd whatever. or something. That's yeah. what he really, really wants. And he's not getting it because she's okay. not tuned in that way. Mm-hmm. And she's not really set up to party or think she in her mind. She may also be thinking, you know, well, good. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And if there's enough of a uh, environment that exists where this has been the situation, uh, just coming in with one thing like I accomplished, you know, fill in the blank at work or whatever, it's really hard for the other to just click into that mode and go, you know, fireworks, right. Yahoo, would be Right. If there's this, you know, underlying. Yes. Current yes. going through it. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I have one more that just came to my mind. Sometimes you said you were almost 40, right? So sometimes. A long time ago, I was almost 40. But, if a guy yeah. has a goal to be a major league pitcher or something, <laughs> what does he have to go through to get there? What yeah. if he wants to be a doctor or something? Yeah. Or what? A, these things can take so much time years and years and years and maybe they're on a straight line they know exactly where they're going or maybe it's a zigzaggy line to get there whatever and maybe there's a great deal of uncertainty involved and so forth if she's impatient and is just feeling the weight of the days the months the weeks the years that she's having to sacrifice or having to deal with the intense commitment on his part and that he's not available to her as much as she needs. There's there's so much that goes into it from the partner's point of view, you know, from her point of view. I'm really trying to partner with you on this, but how much longer? Are we yeah. there yet? Yeah, right. How many times do you hear that from your kids on the yeah. road? Are we there yet? Yeah. It's that kind of feeling. And it can really wear a woman out. So if he's picking up on that, like she's really tired, she's really wearing out, and are we there yet? Um, he could also interpret that as mm. being, she doesn't really think I'm going to get there. Yeah. She doesn't, she's not willing to go all the way to the end of this race with me. So any of those things, they are so common and so <laughs> predictable and so no reason for this marriage to get off kilter or eroding. It's so easily, easily corrected. So let's talk about 
some of the things that maybe she could do that, as she said, actions speak louder mm-hmm. than words. So what are some things she can actually do or feel or in, institute? Is that the right word? Institute would work. In, yeah. Into their marriage, yeah. into their relationship, and into her Implement, heart. Implement, maybe. Into her heart. Okay. Those words always start with I. Have you noticed? Yes. Implement. In, integrate. <laughs> in, include. Or, yeah, they all start so it means that. it all is responsible. For, I have that responsibility. I, yes. It maybe that. that's what it does. Okay. So what can you do to intentionally send the message that you believe in him? We're going to break now for just a minute so I can invite you to my free live masterclass. Understanding Your Husband and Sons. In my work with women in over 70 countries, I found that most of us, when it comes to our husbands and sons, think like Carol in Kenya. I was expecting him to think like me, behave like me. Or Dana in Utah. Shouldn't we just be the same and shouldn't we just agree? Or Anne in California. I grew up in a culture where there was a lot of eye rolling and sighing about guys. And that's too bad because when we act or react based on false expectations, we end up feeling like Catherine. I didn't feel I could relate to him because I didn't understand him. Or getting riled up like Carol made me mad. I was crazy. I was, uh, it was frustrating, you know? And acting like Anne. I used to think he should know what I wanted without me having to ask. Which just erodes our relationships and blows up our dreams. So that's why I created Understanding Your Husband and Sons, a super fun, eye-popping deep dive into his brain, body, and emotional makeup. Women have been coming from all over the world and coming away from our time together with an exhilarating sense of hope and power because now women like Amber, Anne, Dana, and Allison understand. How to communicate my needs. You know, how to be clear about it. How not to be run around, how not to manipulate. The way I communicate with him isn't any more aggressive or threatening to him. I can see why he's reacting or why he's responding that way. That's helped to avoid a lot of the hurt feelings that I used to have. So if like Jeannie in Canada, you're thinking, okay, I need to reboot how I think about marriage and men and how they're loved. Please join me at this free live masterclass, Understanding Your Husband and Sons. I'll teach you things you have never heard before and that you won't hear anywhere else. Science and strategies that will knock your socks off and make all the difference in your relationships. And it just changes everything about how I see him. There's this huge potential that I was not really tapping into because I didn't fully understand it. We're both so much happier now. And in how you see yourself. My confidence as a woman has skyrocketed. We've made it so easy. Just go to wifesavers.org slash masterclass and choose a day and time. I'll meet you there and even answer your questions live because like Carol in Kenya or Cindy in Argentina, you'll want to be able to say, oh, we are wired differently. And that's the beauty of life. And it set me free. It, it allowed me to say, okay, I understand now. And I loved him more than ever. Wifesavers.org slash masterclass. So as much as we're talking about the to-dos, I want to start with the to feels. Mm, okay. So this is an <laughs> internal. There's another I. <laughs> yes. Uh, internal eyes. thing. Okay. <laughs> so her heart, where is her own heart at? And I don't think that any of the suggestions for actual actions that we could give her are going to really have any impact. Just like her words fell sort of flat for him, her actions are flat. Mm-hmm. If they also are, on, also are not coming from a genuine, authentic place. So the first step is to really look inside and say, you know. Do I believe? Yeah, do I believe, first of all, and <laughs> yes. all of this, or me, that, that or whatever. That sounds like a song, too, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sure it is Do somewhere. I believe? It's that, certainly been a sermon. It's, a, it's like a crisis moment on stage. <laughs> do I really believe? But we go through that in a lot of um, 
a lot of other aspects of our life. You know, do mm -hmm. I really ha believe in this religion? Do do I really believe in this product before I'm willing to go out and and back it or support it? Do I really believe in this political action? Whatever we all have to do come this. to the that terms those yeah. terms within ourselves. But I don't know if we really stop to think about: Do I really believe in him? Mm hmm. Hmm. So I'm going to help you do that. Okay. So let's go through. Six questions that I suggest uh, every woman go through and ask herself about her husband and how she feels about him and what he does. Yeah, him and, and the dreams. relationship. Yeah, that yeah well, for... it really comes down to his dreams. Okay. What, what is he trying to do? What does he want to become? Maybe he doesn't even know yet. But it, 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 you're right. They're tied up together. The man and his quest. It's very hard to separate those two things. All right. So the first question is, am I willing to go through the process with him? You and I talked about yeah. the process, right? Or processes. The processes. <laughs> yes. Or the processing. Multiple. Multiple, yes. Multiple processes. Because a, a man's maturation, as well as his, what we call the quest or the pursuing of his dreams and what he's meant to be in this world. It's all about ideas, right? It starts as yep. an idea yep. and ideas are evolutionary. Are they not? Yeah, they absolutely. They're absolutely. not static usually. It's plan your work and work your plan. <laughs> yes. Right. And so evolutionary things take a lot of processing. So you're going to be adding as much as you're breaking down. You're going to be building up and you're going to be decreasing and you're going to be increasing. You're going to go forward. You're going to go backwards. You're going to go sideways. And that's our life. If we had a graph of our development as a couple, which is very much tied and as a family, which is very much tied up in what you were doing, what your pursuits were, um, they and mine, they're all intertwined, but it would, that graph would be just like, it would not be a straight line up the graph, but not diagonally all. up the yeah. graph. It would be like zipped up, down, up, down. And up, wouldn't down. you think, don't you see in the really in the women that you speak with that the husband's quest, career, whatever, right. has probably the biggest impact on how things go? And as a, you know, you said it's your dreams, my quest. The family, the kids, uh, you know, illness, is, uh, well, you know, all sorts of things that play into that. But maybe the one that has the the greatest impact in the is moment so foundational. Is yeah, is the well. What that's the, what we're talking about today. The quest there. It's so foundational that as you get more into wife savers, I'll explain why. <laughs> but it is absolutely foundational because we want our man to become. The, his most best self, his most confident, loving, com, you know, brave self that he can be. That's the guy we want, right? But the venue that's going to get him there is the affirmation that he's receiving from us and from the world mm -hmm. because he is performance oriented far more than a woman is by very much by his innate nature in his cells, scientifically <laughs> it's in his cells. And he's got, he's out there to perform. So if he's performing, he's achieving, he's progressing. He will also be progressing in character and in his relationships. So we, we want that for him. Um, so, so being willing to go through the process. It's a, it's a real process. Number you one. know what we can uh, we can compare it to? It's like a piece of clay. We're molding a, a, his dream like a piece of clay. And that just takes a whole bunch of muscle and flexibility, right? So am I willing to go through the process? Am I willing to go through the tough times? Yeah. That's the second question. Right. Am I willing to go through the tough times to him? Because this kind of making a dream come true, making a man, is very rigorous. <laughs> it is. Painful. <laughs> that reminds painful. me of that scene from, for some reason, from the Mark of Zorro when she goes, he was vigorous. Mother. Very, very vigorous. <laughs> <laughs> I want a vigorous man, don't you, ladies? We want a vigorous man, and that means you're going to have to go through rigorous times. Uh, yeah, I think every 
every uh, every girl wanted to be Catherine Zeta <laughs> Jones at that time, and every guy wanted to be Zorro. So, yeah. yeah. How about that? Well, let's have a little fancy match. Okay. Later. Yeah. Right. Well, bring the sabers up. But vigorous doesn't come without rigorous. I mean, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you can't spell vigorous without rigorous. Well, maybe there's big. gonna the letters, be anyway. challenges. Right. There's gonna be problems and. He's going to get consternated when he's blocked, when he's foiled, you know. But those kind of tough times, those complicated times are really what he's all about. It's all part of the maturation process. Men like solving problems, even though it's not always pleasant. Because Clean. when they... when they pretty. <laughs> it's always pretty. But on the other end, how do you feel as a man? Oh, yeah. When you work your way through those times. Well, I'll just use one, one example. One of the things I love to do is rebuild car engines. Yeah. I always have. You know, I've been doing this... Blows my mind. For 30... Well, yeah, no, longer than that. Long before we were married, I was. I always you like interested. to watch TV shows about rebuilding. I do because <laughs> I learn stuff, right? Yeah. And there's been uh, recently we rebuilt uh, our my son-in-law's engine, and uh -huh. I actually did something that made it worse in working with him. Yeah, and ouch. and it was not only time, but it was a very costly mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. But you get into that environment and you're like, I'm going to fix this blankety blank <laughs> son of a piece of crap, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and the, and then our son had a car that I did the same thing to. Uh -huh. And he's driving that. Both those cars are on the road today. Yes, okay. They're part of, of the Zabriskie fleet. That's right. Yeah. And when I see that, the one car from our son, yeah. I'm just, I just like, yes, I just, that thing <laughs> drives, you know, I start, I drive it, I start it up and listen to that. It is so satisfying. Really? It is. And oh, it's been a year or so, wow. a year and a half since I did right. the one car and about yeah. six, eight months since I did the other. Uh, and it, it's still a I high. I love that. But it was, yeah. it's difficult. It really is. It, it requires this The high comes from... The, d the degree of difficulty exactly. in this, though. Yeah, the right? harder it is, the, the greater right. Hannah and I would look out the garage, you know, you guys are spending night after night after yeah, night out there. Yeah, especially on that you know? one, yeah. And, and she'd be worried, like, oh, it's getting later or whatever. And I'd say, oh, they're happy. Yeah, look, at they're really, really happy. And you're midnight. both out there going, yeah. rah, 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 rah. and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> believe me, they're happy. <laughs> Exactly. So, and by the way, we're selling the one Honda, uh, which gets a rebuild engine in. If you want it, let me know. It's in great shape. Great price. That's right. For the seller. <laughs> That's it. But um, the, what do you want from your partner during those times? I mean, the hard times at work or when, you know, in a crisis. I, what I've picked up on and what I've tried to give you is just a sense of calm. Yes, I, I believe yeah, in you. Yeah, and confidence, and confidence is what I was going to say, and patience, and yeah, like you I, talked I, about patience and letting you work it out. Yeah, and you talked about yeah. how the graph isn't straight. You know, it's uh, up and down, and the, the and the biggest part of of being down is is not staying there and right. realizing that you can get back up. Oh, and that is another whole podcast yeah, right if, there. If you need, but, but mm -hmm. the, the support of the, of the, mm -hmm. of the partner in here mm -hmm. is critical. So that's their second question then. Am I willing to go through the tough right. times with right. him? All right. Third question. Am I willing to contribute to the cause? <gasps> and not contribute to the problem, but contribute <laughs> to the cause. The cause being yeah. him okay. and what he believes in. What he's trying to do, whatever that is, do I, am I willing to contribute to the cause? Because you know what, there, so many people, if not most people, don't ever really get to their dreams, don't really reach their dreams. And, and a lot of the reason why we all know it is because we, we aren't willing to put in the required, whatever is required of that dream, blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like the fact that your third one, because the first two, are um, can connote that it's going to be tough. It's just going to be. I got to. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get through the process. I know there's going to be tough times. I'm going to get through it. Okay. But now this third one is a not a reactionary thing, but a ah. proactive thing. I'm yeah, going to contribute. Right. I want to be, and it's a positivity right. aspect or a positive right. aspect as opposed to looking at it as like, I'm going to grunt it out and yes, oh, I'm Oh, that's so true. It. Because what I have found is that in order to contribute to the cause, 
your cause of you sometimes the years I've had As to... opposed to because of me. Yeah, just, because I... <laughs> okay, just clarify. It's because I had to learn something new. I was a little challenged. I had to stretch okay. a little bit to learn to do something that would be of help to you or that you were missing or lacking or the missing piece in your puzzle or whatever. And so I, that's not, I might have set the tone for that early in our marriage, but I would say that has become a family culture. So that now one of our mottos as a family, and we all take a lot of pride in it, our children are all grown doing their things, which I'm really thrilled with everything mm -hmm. they're doing. Right. Uh, is if you get one Zabriski, you get all the Zabriskis. Yeah, we How many we times have we said that? We show up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like, you, we all throw every talent, uh, every piece of know-how, and some we've never done before, into the pool for any one of us at any mm -hmm. given time. And I, I think, honestly, that began a long time ago when I was willing to throw everything I had into the pool to help you and vice versa. Yeah, and you, and you look at our, our two, uh, two of our, um, our two youngest and what they're trying to do. One, uh, our son and then our daughter, whose uh -huh. husband is yeah. taken on this quest over the right. brand new thing to become a pilot. Right. And it's a huge right. thing that I don't think a lot of women would go through what <laughs> Anna's trying to go through right now. Big yeah. time. And we're all part of that. We're all helping we're to all facilitate well, that. And But it, vice versa, here we are doing our wife savers and my work. What are you doing right now? You're sitting across from me helping me do this very thing, throwing your talent. I don't know how to audio engineer. You're doing all that for me. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. So am I willing to contribute to the cause, add personal value? That's another question. All right. Not an easy question to right. answer. Here's the next question. Am I willing to share my man? With who? <laughs> Who'd you have in mind? <laughs> can I pick? <laughs> Good question. I can see how that could be taken totally <laughs> wrong. But um, as your man and other people, okay, as whatever his dream is, I can guarantee it's going to require other people needing him. It takes a village, as they say. Well, yeah, but yeah. they're going to need him. They're going to expect his time and his energy. And he's only going to achieve with that input from others. Yes. It could be very helpful in going yes, down yes, that yes, path. Yes. I, I, that's an aspect I hadn't really thought of. It's not exactly what I'm saying. No, I, I, like I do. I understand where you're trying to go. I'm just saying that as, as the guy gets out of the... The home environment and such. Or just the partnership. Just the with partnership. You two. There's inevitably going to be so many people involved in his mm, life who are contributing to contributing, the dream. but also he'll have to contribute more with other people, spend more yes, time, more energy. Yes. 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 Yeah. No matter what he's doing, it's going to mean time away from you, focused on others and other uh, pur purposes, causes, whatever focuses outside of you. And the home, right? That sounds like, yeah, duh. But this is a big one for women. We have a really hard time. Uh, all of us do when we just feel like we're not getting enough time, enough attention or enough help from our husbands because they are spending so much time. Let's talk a little bit more about it. But but really, I here, here it comes. This is really what I'm saying. I believe in my, do I believe in my man so much that I want the world to use him. He has so much to give. Mm. He has such a talent. Okay. He has such a gift. Or he has worked so hard on developing this skill or whatever. I can't wait for him to build that house for that family. I, I believe in that. I want to see him whatever it is he does. Um, he's going to bring the world. He's going to make the world a better place by what he does. Am I willing to share him with the world? Because I really believe in that. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that yeah. really takes it up. Yeah, that's a that's a big question. Takes it up a mm -hmm. level. Um, but it's something to think about. Am I willing to share my man? Am I willing to enjoy his success and let him shine? Whoa. Yeah. We'd like, well, yeah, of well, course. Yeah. 
But actually, I've discovered, as my students discover, that sometimes we have a little competition. A little jealousy, a maybe? Little, yeah, a little sense of jealousy, a little sense of competition. Or we're, we're worried about becoming the disappearing woman. Yeah, or, or, or the little stuck. sidekick. Yeah, you're stuck making peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah, and you know. I, I remember the first time I went to overseas and had this amazing meal. Uh, and I had to tell you about it, and you had just had peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> yes, you had blowfish. I had blowfish in Korea or something, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, it takes a uh, you know I had to I have to learn to how to communicate that effectively or communicate just, what effectively. Well, my not make it sound so. <laughs> You had to temper it down. Yeah, maybe. That was, oh, it was, was okay. I crossed the Sydney Bridge, you know, but it was, it's it was highly, really, highly overrated. It's, yeah. The view, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, it's not for everybody. Oh, that's really sweet of you. But I don't, I didn't feel that way. I felt like, like, wow, I was there with you. Yes. Now, if I was in the mindset of the unbelieving wife, that's the I point. would have been jealous. Right. But I was in the mindset of the believing wife where I'm like, I, this is amazing and I'm excited that I believe someday you'll actually take me there. I believe you really want to. Well, and that's what I, that's how I felt is that uh, look at this experience. Where's Ramona, right? <laughs> she should be on top you of gotta, this bridge. Yeah, yeah. right. Looking right. at the Eiffel Tower with me or whatever. And, right. and that's how I felt about it. And I felt that way because I knew that you had confidence and me and believed right but when you're up when you're getting the adulation you're getting the applause you're getting the awards or whatever am i willing to graciously let my man feel the full impact of that of that let him soak it up without him feeling like i'm in the corner sulking mm -hmm. because it's not me yeah. in the spotlight. Do you see what I'm saying? I like the aspect of full impact because oh. if, if, if I feel like it detracts, a yeah, little. That, yeah, that you're not really totally, or you're jealous or whatever. Right. Are you, or I'm not applauding as, as I'm not, yeah. the, I'm not the one in the center front right. row start standing, <laughs> the, starting the standing ovation. That's really who you want to start the standing right. ovation is your partner. That means more to you than 100 million other people, right? So there's really no place in a loving relationship for that kind of comp competition. And I think um, there's a I think there's a movie out just recently called The Wife. I don't I haven't seen it yet, so I shouldn't critique it. But the premise is about this wife who's just given her whole life to her man, and now she's, you know. A nobody kind of thing. Um, and I think women are very afraid of that mm, happening. Okay. So Wife Savers and Wife for Life University will teach you completely the opposite because you're going to come out shining like a million bucks at the end of, all, uh, end of it because we learn how to be dream weavers. So we're not surrendering our individuality and our own dreams and ourself over decades to become a nobody at the end of it and our man be this glorious, shiny yeah. knight on the hill. <laughs> That's not it at all. I don't believe in that. I think it's wrong. So um, this is different, though. We want him to let us shine and we want to we want to applaud. We want to. You know what? I kind of like watching the Academy Awards or the Tony Awards once in a while because you'll hear a husband or a wife credit their spouse mm -hmm. in those those acceptance speeches and they're very emotional very meaningful i love it well the, the best one i have to say was the last academy awards here a few months ago where the um i think it was best director it was a big big uh achievement yeah um uh, talked about his fiance of how oh. amazing she was and oh. then he got down on his knees <gasps> and, and oh, proposed to her <laughs> <laughs> in front of millions and millions of people <laughs> at the Oscars. And, you know, and that's like, yeah, that's a great story. Hopefully that'll end well. <laughs> Hopefully that'll end well. <laughs> yeah, you can write the script. She'd and... better be listening to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or reading the book, right? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty. But there's always, I have a million of examples, contemporary and historic, about the outcome of the mm -hmm. kind of marriages that are dream weavers. Right. And they, they both love each to see each other shine. Succeeding. And... Okay, so that was the last question. Am I willing to let him shine? Here's the next one. Am I willing to defend the dream? Defend the dream. How does that, how does that differ than uh, sharing my man or, you know, what? Uh, willing yeah. to go through it. Right. Well, this is more of like, what's your public face? Mm, okay. 
<laughs> I don't have it. to defend the dream to him, but I may have to defend it to other people. Okay. So for instance, I have a student whose husband has a really honorable profession, very admirable in my book, but um, her family uh, have a whole different line of work and they think that his line of work is not as valuable. So you got a bunch of, say, attorneys on one side and whatever he's got something else. It's not yeah. what they'd all did, maybe. Right, or yeah. the way they did it, yeah. or the okay. whatever. And so they, I don't want to get too specific. No, I'm not. Uh, but yeah, they, uh, she's had to defend his dream and his choices, uh, his decisions, his direction to her own siblings, for instance, in many, many family conversations. Where she's like, no, don't worry. It's all going to, you know, we're having a little rough time right now, but it's we've got a plan and mm -hmm. it's going to work out and he's doing great and that kind of thing. Are you willing to do that? Or are you going to let people's doubts start eroding at your loyalty and lead to that where you actually are not sure you do believe anymore because you're listening to everybody else's doubts. And, so, and the influence of family and friends and uh, others can be, you know, have a, have a, it can be very large and oh, have a huge right, impact. Huge impact. So that's why you need to think ahead of yes, time. Yes, prepared. <laughs> Am I willing to defend the dream? It's you better think about it. It's pretty critical to think long and hard on that question. You know, especially at the start of a new endeavor. Am I, okay, wait a minute. Let's step back here. This is going to take a big investment on my part. So I'm going to ask those questions that Ramona told me to ask. I'm going to ask myself. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to work my way through them. I'm going to journal about them. I'm going to think about it hard until I, I had to do this. Sure you did. Yeah. Especially when you accepted that one job that meant you were going to start traveling a yeah. lot for the first time yeah every week uh, i was really scared and i i that was the first time i admitted that i'd been reserving some of my enthusiasm for you know quite some time when we were going through the whole application and interviewing process and actually you didn't get the job right and it was months or weeks later when they came back and said, oh, never mind. The first guy didn't work yeah, out. You yeah, were runner up. Was, so we want you now. And I'm like, holy four cow. Four or five months. Oh, my. This is reality now. And I realized that all that time, I hadn't really been fully on board. So I had to go through this very process. And and then I remember, the, I write about it in the book, the moment that I it really came together for me. And I'm like, yes. It was like the birth of yeah, a nation. We're going to do this. <laughs> It was pretty revolutionary. So we don't want to get ripped apart by doubts and disloyalties. So that's a huge question. So there they go. That's it. Those are the six, what I call, life-staking questions. They're not easy to answer. They're not supposed to be easy to answer. But your, your answers will lead you, wife, to places you can hardly even conceive on right now. But there's going to be all these little ways she's going to find him now that her heart's been opened by those six questions. She knows the message that she's trying to send, which is you, you know, you're, you're fulfilling your responsibility as well. And I trust you're doing your best for us. That's the message. That, but it can be sent in a million actions. Same thing with you can do it. I want you to do it. Many, many ways she can send that message. So it's just the secret. It's the secret that powerful wives whose husbands really cherish them. This is what they already know, that to cherish the man, but not his quest or his dreams, is virtually impossible. Confidence in one is faith in the other. Thanks for believing in me, honey. Oh, well, like I said at the outset, thanks for believing in me and over and over and over again. So, honey, you know the old adage, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Yeah. The answer is no. No. Because a sound has to be received. Uh-huh. And that's why I love our subscribers so much. They're receiving our sounds. <laughs> we wouldn't have a podcast.
guessed what no. happened. And I wouldn't have a free live masterclass understanding your husband and sons. If people don't sign up, they got to go to wifesavers.org slash masterclass. Home is with you wherever that may be.